It was like time had frozen, still. Clementine could hear every breath she took, the roaring of the shots oddly muffled as she hit the ground for cover. The world was white, the tundra environment was biting at the exposed skin that she wouldn't give some gloves right about now. But the frostbite was the least of her worries. Screams sounded from all around, clogging her senses, rendering her almost helpless to the situation. She tried to get a very good look at to what was happening, but it was so cold and loud, yet strangely quiet at the same time. Her hands brushed against the dirt and the snow, and she crawled below the bullets, vision blurry and disoriented. She recognized Arvo a few feet away, attempting to get down and dodge the attacks. The girl that had been standing next to him covered her head, and but yelled out as a shot pierced through her abdomen, collapsing her to the ground. Arvo screeched in surprise, yelling out a muffled cry in Russian as he leaned over, Natasha, 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 Natasha! Before his eyes and Clementine could practically see the, des the despair sinking in, the girl began to convulse, her head rolling from side to side as if she was having a seizure. Arvo panicked, and once he, she finally laid still, he began to perform CPR on her, his hands working on a friend's place to jumpstart her heart. Mike staggered in front of Clementine, and the scene before her holding his shoulder. Shit, shit, I'm hit! He screamed, his voice echoing, roaring her eardrums. Her eyes had scanned her surroundings, keeping her head as low as possible. Luke was hidden behind a chunk of the broken stone wall, shooting at the one of the direction. Jane and Bonnie were nearby, following Luke's direction of the fire, and calling out to Mike, respectively. One of the Russian men was on the ground, scrambling backwards as he returned to fire. Kenny was behind the tree, hissing some insults as he attempted to gun down some of the, um, the other party, two Russians aiming in the direction. Sarita, Sarah, Nick, and Troy were nowhere to be found. A baby's cry struck out of over the yelling of gunfire. Clem's eyes widened when she spotted AJ, still was swaddled tightly, wailing on the ground. Rebecca's corpse sat a few feet away, having be dropped him to the, onto the ground. Both parties were still shouting. Nothing but pure anger or hatred in the tones. She couldn't make out what anyone was saying anymore, and it didn't matter now. She had to get AJ. Her fingers felt numb as she dragged herself through the snow, keeping her head low and looking for somewhere to hide once she was grabbed the baby. However, before she could, she felt someone grab uh, her, her leg from behind. Crying out in supply, she thrashed out of instinct, trying to get loose. Let me go, she hissed, scrambling to the icy dirt. Calm down, you little... It's me, Troy. The voice sounded familiar, although muffled by gunshots. She lifted her head to see Troy crouching down over her with an irritated expression etched onto his features. His lip was cut, mud caked in his hair, but his eyes were wide alert. I'm trying to frickin' help you. AJ, she could, cried as, she continue, as he continued to haul her away. Only a short distance feet, they ended up behind a cover of another stone wall. This was across from where she had seen Luke, Bonnie, and Jane a few moments ago. Angrily, she turned to Troy, who didn't seem to notice what he had done wrong. She smacked his lone arm missing. Why did you do that? What about AJ? He blinked at his face, scrunching up in confusion. Who? With a disgusted look, she was about to turn around and crawl right in the line of fire again to grab the baby, but a hand on her shoulder stopped her. Glancing in its direction, she found Nick crouched near her his other hand tightly clamped around a pistol. Now that she had gained some of her bearings, she found both Troy and Nick were using this Patreon as a cover. Raising their heads for a few seconds, Moses shoot across the clearing and then duck again. However, after a few moments, it became clear that they weren't alone in the cover. Sarita was nearby, keeping Sarah's head down and away from any stray bullets. Clementine raised her head slightly to look over the wall just in time to see Luke attempt to get the baby in the middle. A practically loud shot rang out shortly after, echoing across a small makeshift battlefield. Luke stumbled as a bullet went through his leg, collapsing just right behind the cover behind beside Sarah and Sarita. Nick turned his attention away from the enemy to crawl over towards the, his wounded friend. You okay, man? Luke nodded towards Nick, stammering out, I I'm fine, I'm fine. Arr! He then latched onto his leg, his eyes bulging with panic. Sarita then placed a hand on his shoulder. Let me see. Clementine then got a closer look, too. She could see blood trickling down his lower pant leg. The fabric slowly started to dye red. 
a painful reminder of the small scuffle that they'd gotten themselves into. Luke's breath became in pain sides as his fingers clenched onto his leg, trying in vain to stop both the pain and the bleeding. Are you sure you're okay? She asked, swallowing hard. She was no doctor, but thankfully Sarita was able to examine him quickly enough. I think, fuck, I don't know. I don't know if it went through or what, but it just, fuck. Luke wasn't making much sense, but she couldn't blame him. It looked painful. He'll be all right. The bullet went through, Sarita announced, tearing off the piece of the sleeve and wrapping it tightly around Luke's thigh. He gave a muffled howl, biting down on his lip until Clementine noticed trickles of blood seeping down his chin. She grimaced and turned away from the sight glance and then back over to the wall. She, the, he hadn't managed to get to AJ. She could still see the child still out in the open. She whispered his name in a panic, catching the attention of Sarita. Once she had knotted the fabric around Luke's wound, she followed Clementine's gaze over the, to the helpless baby. Sarita looked back in Sarah's direction. Her lips pierced and eyebrows furrowed, glancing back to Clementine and Luke. I have to go get him. Sarita, it's... It's dangerous, Nick protested. Luke then nodded in agreement. Nick's right. They know AJ is out there now. We'll, they'll wait for you to try and get him. Like he's gonna kind of bait. She didn't say anything in response. But she then took a look on her face and she knew exactly what would happen. Clementine was about to respond to play to Sarita not to go. To try and find a different way. Or something that might help. But Sarah's head snapped up before she could. Fearful expression settling in her face. You're... You're going out there? She whispered herself in disbelief. If her eyes were behind the glasses. Nodding, Sarita replied, AJ is alone. I have to at least try and get him. I'll never be able to live with myself if something happens and I did nothing. But, but we need you here, Sarah protested. Flinching has another gunshot sounded nearby. Who's going to be the doctor? I've taught you plenty, the woman replied somberly. And if I don't come back, I know you can go on without me. You could save lives. No, 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 I, I can't. Not without you, she cried, latching onto the woman's jacket. Please, please don't leave me like, like my dad. Frowning, Sarita pulled the girl into a quick hug, shaking her head as she held the girl like a mother would. I have to, Sarah. Don't you understand? She whispered, closing her eyes briefly. I can't let another child die. No, 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 please, Sarah wailed, clean her tighter and shaking her head in anguish. Sarita eventually let go, leaving Sarah uh, trying to hold on to Vane. I'm sorry, she sighed, and said nothing more, turning to Clementine, Nick, and Luke. She gave them a furred nod. Please tell Kenny I'm sorry, too. This is just something I have to do. You you don't have to be any Mertry, uh, Sarita, Nick said. Clementine's family wasn't overly religious, but the three of them did go to church every Sunday. She recalled hearing that mass in a few times. She didn't exactly know what it meant, but she could connect the dots there. Sarita was being a matrice, like most meant for dying for AJ. The woman then prepped herself for death with a courage that was complete tragedy that she all could die at. Sarita then took a deep breath, peeking over the wall and gap in the shootings to make a run for it. Swallowing hard, Clementine exchanged a glance at, with Nick, Luke, and now Troy, kept her sights trained on the mantra from behind the wall. This, this ain't foolish, Luke whispered. No, it ain't. It's brave, Nick snapped back. Sarita darted from cover, making a spurt towards AJ. She kept her gaze focused ahead of her, not even flinching at the gunfire and yelling sounds around her. No! Sir, Sarah cried out trying to get to her feet in an attempt to go after her. What the? Keep your frickin' head down! Troy snarled, grabbing the girl's arm and yanking her down. He kept her pinned under him, not phased by her wriggling and crying. Shut up, Sarah! Though it wasn't as kindly she would have liked, Clementine still was, was pleased if her friend was kept safe and focused her sights back on Sarita. Kenny noticed his girlfriend moving and cried out her name in panic, signaling the Russians to set off their guns. The shots almost covered Kenny's screams, but Clementine could hear the horrified gasp as he let out as he watched the bullets fly through the air. One shot pierced Sarita's back, causing the woman to topple over to her knees with a hiss of pain. With the little strength she had, 
Sarita gently covered AJ, tucking the child under her chest, but making sure he was still able to breathe. Just as she did so, one of the Russians approached her on the ground, mercilessly putting the bullet on the side of her head. You, you son of a bitch! Kenny bellowed, firing into the head of the enemy standing over Sarita's still body. Sarita! Sarita, are you all right? He almost took off from his point cover, but was distracted with a few more bullets aimed in his direction. Turning to the nearest ally, he hissed, Aim your guns at the bastards in the forest! I gotta get her! Don't be stupid, Jane cried. You're going to get yourself killed! But Kenny certainly wasn't listening. With a groan and an annoyance, Jane just fired a shot towards another Russian, peeking out from behind the tree. Finally managed to snipe him in the head. The battlefield looked even emptier now. Only one set of shots seemingly targeting any of the group. Some bullets grazed Sarita's corpse in the center. Clementine was just glad she was there. If she hadn't been, AJ probably would have been hit. Speaking of, the baby was crying, proving that he was at least still alive. One of the last Russians, and the only one being aggressive, yelled out, not bullet budging from his hiding spot. Obviously fed up with the gunflight and the impatience to get to Sarita, Kenny shot in the Russian's direction long enough to sprint towards Arvo, grabbing and pressing the barrel of his gun to the teen's temple. You get out here, or I put a bullet in this kid's head, Kenny yelled. Clementine then stared in horror as the man held his hostage close, his eye glaring down towards his enemy's hiding spot. She could see and feel it in his gaze. He was completely serious. He would kill Arvo without hesitation, even if his ally didn't surrender. Kenny, what are you doing? She cried. I'm ending this. He barely looked over away for a second and he snarled. Get out here. Get right out here. Right fucking now. Arvo cried out as he wriggled to get free and back to the girl sprawled on the ground. She didn't even seem to be breathing now. Clementine flashed a worried gaze at Arvo and her, unsure of what to do. Stop squirming, damn it, Kenny growled, keeping a tight grip on the boy. Arvo continued to struggle. However, yelling out phrases in Russian so fast, Clementine couldn't even recognize the words as anything as garbled sounds. Finally, the teen's desperation lured out the remaining foe. The Russian man stepped out not too far from his hind spot, providing Kenny a clear shot in his head. But after but his last bullet flew, the whole scene seemed to turn in even more still and quiet like a graveyard. Arvo was finally let go as his, his ally was dead, scrambling towards the girl on the ground. Nastasha! Tasha! His fingers ghosted over her wrist, eyes end tightly as he took some deep breaths and muttered something under his breath. Sarita! Clementine's attention was snapped back to Kenny who is completely dead set on getting to his fallen girlfriend. Sarita, 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 he repeated, collapsing onto his knees in front of the woman taking her in his arms. She didn't move, her lifeless eyes staring into nothing. The man shifted a trem trembling hand gently, closing his eyes and holding her close. Oh God, not again, not again. I can't lose you too, he shuddered, loud enough for Clementine to hear from her spot. Her heart began to ache for Kenny. This was just like how he lost Katja and Duck. He had to lose all he had left all over again. He was just... It was like her with Lee, in a way. After her parents' demise, she didn't want to lose anyone ever again. But she had to put down Lee a few moments later. Life was now unbearably cruel at times, and she looked away from the broken man in the center of the field, turning to look at her companions. How many are left? Mike cried out. From behind a half of the wall, breaking through the thoughts. I've got so many bullets, you know. Two left, Nick announced. His words somber and pointed towards Arvo and the girl on the ground. It's over. It's over, those words echoed in Clementine's mind. The enemies were mostly dead, but she didn't feel as though she had been won on something. If anything, it was bittersweet triumph. They'd won, but the bodies of Rebecca and Sarita were enough to earn them nothing but grief. Before she could even think of who to approach first, the squawking voice cut through the quietness at the scene. Clementine! Troy hissed, shooting a glare over the wall from behind her, still in the crouching position next to Sarah. Get over here and help me! Upon seeing her friend in possible distress, the girl dashed over, nodding now that Sarah was curled up on her knees to her chest. Her hands were wrapped in around in her legs and panic gasps as left her lips. I... I can't! 
I can't breathe. Sarah was mumbling, her eyes squeezing tightly as she rocked forward in rhythmic motions. She's been like this after she squirmed her away from my grasp, Troy muttered, his expression frustrated, not only in range like Clementine had expected. What the hell is wrong with her? A panic attack, the girl replied quietly, crawling forward and patting her friend's knee. Sarah, um, just breathe. She struggled to remember what Nick had told her many days ago. However, before she could, the man in the question was already rushing towards her to make sure she was okay. Clementine grabbed onto Troy, dragging him back from the two of them. What are you two doing? He barked, but he, she silenced him with a glare. It was clear that Nick and Sarah needed to be alone for the time being. Ready? One, two, three. Slowly, he counted as she took some deep breaths in, beginning all at once. She once breathed out in return. Her wide, terrified eyes seemed too dull after a few moments of her synchronized eyes, ritual, and then she nodded thanks to Nick. The man nodded, patting her back. Nick, um, where's Sarah, and Sarita, and Rebecca? Sarah whispered, her voice cracking. Nick shook his head, his eyes closing briefly. There was no doubt in Clementine's mind that he was thinking about when he had lost Pete. After a few moments of silence between the two of them, Sarah practically melted into the snow, an anguish cry echoing in the otherwise quiet clearing. Sarita! Rebecca! No! The girl's hands clawed at the ground until her fingernails were caked with dirt, her face becoming red as she sobbed and sobbed. Shit, Sarah! Luke then limped over to, to Nick after a few moments, sitting down with his friend in front of the girl. It hit Clementine suddenly that the three of them were at the last of the original cabin group, and their bond was in the deep for that reason. Kenny was the only one left from the ski lodge, but at least he knew Clementine before, and Mike and Bonnie and Jane and Troy were all from Howe's. The large group that had once made up Clementine's allies was dwindling, and only three of them from those that allowed her to stay in their small family. Suddenly, wondering if she was intruding, Clementine walked out to the clearing away from behind the tree, hearing Troy's quiet footsteps behind her. Swallowing hard, she inspected the scene before her. Kenny was cradling Sarah Sarita's corpse, his back turned to the group. Mike was holding his shoulder, wincing at the bullet wound left from fight. Bonnie stood between him and Rebecca's body, flashing a glance towards it. After swallowing hard, she quietly approached Kenny and Sarita. Her hands held up in defense as she merely picked up AJ and backed away. The child wasn't crying anymore, but it wasn't deadly silent either. Gentle coos from sound from the bundled form, while Jane stood idly nearby, her gaze trained into the woods. Arvo was weeping right beside the girl on the ground, his head lowered and the choppy bangs covering his face. She's, she, she's, she's dead. At a heartbreaking whisper, Clementine's stomach dropped. She glanced over at Arvo sympathetically, watching Mike gently approach the teen. The man's eyes then showed an astonishing compassion once again. Clementine was pleasantly surprised at the kindness of the members of the group. Hey kid, he began to startle Arvo. The teen snapped his gaze towards Mike, his eyes widened with fear as he'd been shot at any moment. His body trembled as his knee heaved there, teeth sinking into the bottom lip anxiously. But please, please, do not, she... She is dead. My sister dead, he choked, sobs rattling the skinny frame. Clementine softened her gaze, noting Arvo's gun uselessly lying by him. Not close enough for him to reach it, though. His shoulders were shaking and his hand grasping for his sister, Natasha. She, he, as he whispered the words in Russian. It seemed as if though the only voices clearing in those were grieving. Kenny was mumbling Sarita's name. Sarah was still quietly sobbing about Rebecca and Sarita, and Arvo was speaking to his dead sister. Everyone else was gravely silent. Arvo, Clementine began, realizing that Natasha would need to be taken care of before she could even think of comforting Kenny. Arvo, we need to... She wasn't able to finish that statement, for Mike, who stood in front of her, holding an arm out and nodding to her, indicating that they, he could deal with this. Clementine gave him a nod in, of her own in return, but didn't just move yet. You need to put her down, kid. She's going to turn, Mike whispered, gently getting closer to them. No, 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 please. I, I cannot shoot my sister. Arvo mumbled, shaking his head. I know, Mike murmured, 
his palm clasping Arvo's shoulder. I know it's hard, but you don't want her to become one of those things, do you? The Russian teenager shook his head, his eyes closing tightly. Mike snatched the nearby weapon and placed it in Arvo's palm, silently encouraging him to do what needed to be done. Wait a freaking minute! Don't give him the gun! Stepping forward, Troy tried to interject. Are you sure this is a good idea? Yes, Mike replied immediately, narrowing his gaze. If you had to pull, put down your own sibling, you wouldn't want it to be anyone else doing it, right? Troy froze, his eyes wide, somewhat distant from a moment before his teeth clenched tightly, his lip almost curling upwards into a snarl. He tore his gaze away, letting out a low growl, like some sort of animal, but said nothing. Clementine gazed up at him curiously, just to ask of what his deal was, but decided to let it go for now. Troy didn't seem to be any reason to be angry anyway. A sudden screeching gunshot made her jump, and it had been expected, but she could still Ne still never get used to the loudness. Arvo crumpled next to his sister's body, a bullet hole through his head. Natasha! He spread himself out on top of her, crumbling into a sobbing mess. It seemed as if though the angry young man that attacked them was revenge no more. His place was scared, the little boy. Just as scared as the rest of them, if not more. Terrified of living without his family. Clementine felt horribly guilty. It was her fault that this started this in the first place. If she, As she used the medicine they recently found a second fought, she hadn't want this fight to end in bloodshed, but she definitely didn't want to kill any of the Russians. It was never her intention to kill anybody, as she proved with Troy, but she had no control over what happened. She wished there could have been a way to end this with anything us or them situation, but ultimately it had to come down what it had to. And she knew it could nothing be changed. Rebecca and Sarita would not come back, neither would any of Arvo's group. Loss with his, was inevitable. Tearing her gaze away from the broken teenager, she decided to focus on who she was next worried about. Kenny. It was still hard to believe Sarita was dead just like that. Just moments ago, she had been telling Sarah what a good job she was doing on packing up the medical techniques. Only a few days back, she had only told the two girls about her daughter. Sarita couldn't risk another child dying. It was a noble way for her to die, but it didn't suck any less. It didn't change the fact that she was dead, and they all would miss her, especially Kenny and Sarah. The girl was able to grieve out for her tears, but Kenny was a different story. Lee had to tell, had told her Kenny let out his sorrow through anger. She had witnessed it before after Katja and Duck's deaths. The man had became more irritable, less sturdy, like something cracked and broken beyond repair. She didn't talk with him much normally after that moment. When she finally saw through Kenny's face, she had to pause in her steps just to take a few steps. The man looked absolutely horrible. His face scrunched up in anguish, and his gaze set on Sarita's still face. Just as Clementine fought, his grief was much different than Sir Sarah's. In fact, sadness was almost immediately melted into anger once he noticed Clementine approaching. Why did you let her go? He growled. His tone quieted with the dangerous edge to it. She stopped dead in her tracks, blinking in confusion at his words. I didn't let her go, she said, crossing her arms. She decided to go herself. Kenny snapped his gaze up at her, eyes narrowing fiercely. You could have stopped her. What could I have done? God damn it. You could have grabbed her arm. You could have told her no. You could have done something. But she had to be... She didn't have to be no goddamn shield. Damn it, Sarita. Was so much fucking more than that. I know, Kenny. Clementine cried, Aid shaking her head. Sarita was a good person. I liked her a lot. She would never want Sarita to risk her life like that. But it had been the woman's choice. Couldn't Kenny see that? And why was he blaming this on Clementine anyway? The man then stopped and closed his eye, stroking Sarita a cold force and murmured, do you know how it feels like to get beaten almost to death? Clementine then stared at him, her heart pounding, nearly leaping out of her throat, but she couldn't get any words out. She merely continued to look at him, her lips and drawn in a helpless frown. Peaceful. It feels peaceful. Like was nothing flowing away, watching the whole thing happen to me. Sari Kennedy's expression darkened as he continued. And then I woke up again, and nothing's changed. 
I'm still talk, taking a breathing every day. Duck, Katja, Sarita, no peace, no rest. Her heart then broke for the man, but Clementine couldn't get over the fact that he had just tried to blame her for Sarita dying. It did scare her if she was and he would have kept going. But honest, maybe it was selfish for her to focus on how it made her feel, but it still frightened her nevertheless. Why couldn't Carver just finish me off, obviously? I ain't helping anyone being here. Clementine let those words settle between them before saying out a long slide before replying. You help me out. You help us all. I know a lot of them are scared. We need you to be strong. Kenny then pierced his lips, gazing down at Sarita once more. I'm tired of being strong. Well, too bad, she snapped. You have to be. We all have to be strong, even if we're tired of it. Clementine sauntered forward, hesitantly placing a hand on his shoulder. She could feel his muscle rip lane underneath, causing her to retract the palm immediately. Last thing she wanted was him striking out at her. But nothing happened. The man just finally rested Sarita's body down. Closing his eyes and murmuring, This ain't easy. You know, sometimes I forget that you're just a kid. I mean, it ain't fair of me. Of me. I just... I don't got much left. No one does, she pointed out somberly. He then got to his feet, his one-eyed gaze burning into hers. She swallowed hard, a bit nervous. This wasn't the first time she was feeling uneasy around Kenny, and she wasn't certain it wouldn't be the last. But she stood her ground. As much as she hated him, Carver was right about the one thing. Clementine wasn't afraid to push the past fear and look straight into the eye. Kenny opened his mouth to reply, but something caught his gaze and in the distance all at once. All the man's eyes clouded as he stomped past her, Anger practically radicating off of him. She turned around, watching him as, as the storm centered of the clearing. She hadn't noticed the remains of the cabin group had rejoined the last of their party. Sarah was standing nervously with her head focused towards the ground, between Nick and Luke. After Kenny brushed past everyone else, Kenny re Clementine realized who she, he was heading for most immediately, Arvo. Wait, stop, she called. Following him, the man ignored her, of course, and dragged Arvo to his feet, ignoring the protesting pleas in Russian, and at first collided with the teacher's head, making him squeak in pain and nearly lose his footing. Hey, Bonnie cried out, handling Clementine and her baby, turning to the older man. Stop, Mike yelled, grabbing a hold of Kenny and pushing him backwards, taking a stance in front of Arvo protectively. Luke followed his actions, limping over to protect Russian from any violence thrown at his way. It's over, man. He ain't a threat to us. How can you say that? Of course he is, Kenny spat, holding the gun towards the three of them. Get out of the way. Time to do the same thing this asshole tried to do to us. It doesn't have to go down like that, Mike replied. Kenny, please, Bonnie chimed in. He's just a scared kid. He tried to shoot us. Kenny roared, anger blazing through his eyes so fiercely that Clementine's heart skipped a beat, prompting her to hold AJ closer, instinctively. Arvo then cowered behind the two men, stuttering out, I, I know, shoot, I never mean my gun. It only shot Natasha. Please listen. With tears still streaking down his cheeks, he continued, There's food. House food. Please, I could take you. Bullshit, Troy snapped, though not as maliciously as Kenny's previous words. No, no, it's true. We have a place. Not far. Food. See? Luke said. He wants to help. Don't be stupid. He's just trying to save his skin. Kenny snapped. Why would the hell would he help us, huh? The teenager lowered his gaze, shaking his head. I, I don't want to see more people dead. Kenny's eyes glittered darkly. Then close your eyes and I'll make it quick. Clementine narrowed her eyes, frustrated with Kenny's rage. Arvo had initiated in the confrontation. But who had taken the medicine in the first place? Who had remembered the stranger that had been so revengeful after the group had taken his things? Long enough so he kept tabs on Clementine and eventually had her away from Lee? And who has still used the medicine despite the terrible memory? Whose fault is it, really? We need the food, she points out quietly. None of this will matter if we all starve to death. And if he's lying, Kenny asked, turning her on her angrily. Then we'll all be lead into a trap and be dead anyway. Finally, the yelling became too much for AJ and he began to cry. 
Clementine attempted to rock him in his arms, shushing him gently like she had seen Sarita do a few days ago. Kenny's attention was caught by the infant, his lips piercing in frustration. Sarita died to save AJ, Clementine murdered, murdered her eyes then closing briefly. He'll starve too if we don't take the risk and go for the food, and then she'll have died all for nothing. It was harsh, yes, but it seemed like those harsh words that Kenny needed were far enough in to connect. C -c Clem's right. A quiet voice from behind. Nick had moved once to the side. Sarah cautiously stepped forward in front of the two with Arvo and Mike and Luke. Sarita would have wanted this. She helped Troy, and she would help Arvo if he needed it. She, she didn't want to see anyone else die. She never want you to kill Arvo. Especially like this. Clementine then noticed Sarah's legs trembling. The fear here reflecting in her eyes. Behind her glasses. But she held her ground too nevertheless. A smile crossed the girl's lips. Proud of her friend for standing up for her what she believed in. Sarah was really growing more confident as the days went on. After a few moments of stare down between the two, Kenny finally lowered his gun and retracted with a sly. We got something to tie him up with? Bonnie nodded, replying, Yeah, I got something. She pulled out a few pieces of rope from her backpack, approaching Arvo gently and began to tie in his wrists together. Just give me a reason, Kenny growled. Yeah, man, he gets it, Luke snapped, glaring back towards the elder man. You could stop sounding like you're a broken record now. Clementine then sighed and watched the group bicker more. Keeping her efforts focused on AJ and keeping him calm, the baby looked up at her with wide eyes, and she stared back with it that she was sure that the same curious expression he gave her. Of course she wasn't able to limit her attention for AJ for too long, because a moment later, she had heard Mike ask in an irritated tone, What the hell are you doing, Troy? She glanced over and just in time to see Mike flash a disgusted glance at Troy's way. The one-armed man was crashed down near one of the body of the Russians beginning to unzip their jacket. He grimaced and rolled his eyes. What? You all never looted bodies before? Jesus, no wonder why you all have so little stocked up. Save it, Nick snapped, crossing his arms. You got most of our medicine anyway, so that could have been used for Rebecca. Troy narrowed his eyes. I didn't ask for you to use it on me, you know. Well, you could have been a little more grateful. Clementine stepped up, eyeing the both of them. Nick, it's okay, she assured, shooting a glare at Troy's way as well. She couldn't deny the fact that he had a good method of survival, taking things from others that didn't need them anymore. But if she didn't take like it, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. I'm not. I don't see why not. Jane of all people seemed to agree with Troy, checking over the corpses by Sarita. Taking the ammo and weapons is what everyone thinks about first, but food and clothing can be just as important. They're not going to need any supplies anymore. It just seems so disrespectful, Bonnie commented quietly, shaking her head. Jane scoffed. They're dead. Nothing like it matters anymore. Er, Arvo then looked away, muttering what sounds like curses in Russian. You are bad people, he said Fru gritted his teeth. You, you just like their things off of their bodies. Yeah, well, we didn't ask to be the shot, kid, Troy snapped, yanking some clothing for himself. This one's just got a warm-looking coat and a few bullets with pistols. Jane, what about that one? The woman crouched down by the corpse near her, flipping the man over and inspecting his pockets. Some jewelry, a few packages of crackers, among other things. Clementine was dumbstruck. The two of them were looking at each other's throats a few days ago, was still acting like they were in business partners now. Curtly responding to another as they were looking for clothing and food in the bodies that were probably still warm. It was disgusting if she was honest, and she had made a mental note to never do something like this. Like Jane said, weapons are one thing, but taking clothes, it just didn't seem right. Okay, here we go. The girls got some bandages and lever straps. The hell are these for? Troy barked, inspecting what he found in confusion. No, please, not Natasha. Please leave her alone. Do not use those. They're... Arvo pleaded, glancing down at his braced leg. They're for this. My leg, it was hurt. Those were the brace breaks. We can bring them along, Mike assured, in case we need them for you. Kenny interjected, stepping forward towards Troy and Jane. Let's go, two of you. Your fricked-up lottery is done. He humorously eyebrows furrowed. 
The two looters shrugged and they collected what they found, placing it all in the group's backpacks for safekeeping. Clementine was secretly impressed by their haul, although it did still disgust her, still. At least the group had now more medical supplies, food, and weapons. Everyone else began to get ready to leave. Bonnie took AJ in her arms again. Nix slung Luke's arm over his shoulder and let him lean on, and the rest grabbed what they could. Clem, Sarah murmured, approaching her friend. Are we just going to leave him there without saying goodbye? Her eyes then flashed over to Serena and Rebecca, her words causing everyone to follow their actions and avert their attention. With a sigh, Kenny bent down and carefully lifted Serena's body, giving her forehead a gentle kiss, then placed it next to Rebecca. I'm sorry, hon, he whispered softly, so Clementine almost didn't catch it. He swallowed hard and then looked back to the others, his gaze empty. Mostly everyone walked forward, surrounded by the two fallen members of their group. Their heads bowed in respect for the women, the only those that were not a part of this vigil, Troy and Arvo and Jane. They were still standing close by them, frowns on their faces. I guess the cold was just too much for Rebecca, Luke murmured gravely, closing his eyes. I wish we could have been more help. If I could have just took an AJ off of her for a bit. That's enough, Mike said, shooting him a glance. It ain't nobody's fault. She would have been a damn good mom, Sarah whispered, her voice cracking. Yeah, she would have. You rest easy, Bex. We'll take care of your boy, Bonnie promised. And Sarita, thank you. Thank you for taking care of AJ. He may have not been here if it weren't for you. He probably wouldn't, Nick commented quietly, lowering his head. She was shielding him. I saw it. Yeah, she cared too much for this cold world, Kenny growled clenching his teeth and tearing his sights away. His boots crunched into the snow as he began to walk away, looking over his shoulder at the rest of them. Let's go. We need to get AJ out of the cold. And kid, I swear to God, if you're leading us to a trap... He cocked his gun, pointing at Arvo, to finish his sentence without words. Arvo then shook his head, voice still trembling. I, I swear, I'll take you. Let's go then, the words that the group all began to say as they continued through the cold huddling themselves around and pretending to ignore the blood-peppering snow. Clementine then turned around one more time, frowning at the two women that were leaving behind. They were both from arteries, giving each other the most smallest smile, most vulnerable member of the group could ever live. They sacrificed everything for AJ, and Clementine wasn't about to let anyone forget that, nor she was going to let anything Rebecca and Sarita did for them be in vain.